welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter to you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Millay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. This episode is called Getting Started. We're gonna talk about some of the fundamental building blocks of marketing and what I believe marketing really is in its simplest form. We're gonna look at a process that's streamlined for success and applicable to beginners and experts alike. But before we dive in, I wanted to share with you a quote from one of my favorite marketing experts. His name is Seth Godin. He's written so many books on the topic of marketing, I've lost track. He's really a thought leader in the industry space. And if you ever get the opportunity to read one of his books, please do. You'll you'll have a, a blast. He's got a great sense of humor, too. He says that people do not buy goods and services. They buy relations, stories, and magic. So something I think we all need to keep in mind whenever we approach marketing is people don't buy for logical, rational reasons. They they buy on emotions found in stories and relationships, anecdotes, dreams, and their wishes. So with that seed planted, let's move on. What is marketing? In its simplest form, Marketing is the process of building relationship between you and your potential customer or client. You as a business owner or entrepreneur have a product, offer, a service, or you have expertise to share with the world. Your potential customer or client has a problem, a need, or a gap in their knowledge that they, you can help them with. Marketing is the process that enables you to connect them and they to find you building a relationship like a bridge between you for mutual benefit. Seems simple, right? Well, it is kind of simple, actually. But there's a lot of people that get confused, anxious, overwhelmed whenever they talk about marketing. And it really should be simple. I believe it's because there's so much noise around the topic that that it's really difficult to focus and make choices about how to proceed. So um, there's so many voices claiming to have the, the best method, the best process, the, the save yourself time, the shortcut to the riches, right? But so many ideas on how to, they have so many ideas on how to approach different tasks and software and platforms and who's winning doing this and who's in the two comma club and who's getting this award. It's, it's kind of crazy. And the landscape, the internet is changing every day, right? Every week, something new comes out. Today's hot topic is tomorrow's old news, right? It's so hard to focus. It's kind of like Times Square in New York City, right? Surfaces, if you've been there, every building has a screen on it. There's ads and stock tickers and videos and talking heads and all sorts of craziness going on. And then there's uh, the traffic noise and the street signs and the flashing lights for the Broadway and tourists and shoppers and vendors and hawkers. It's perfect orchestra of chaos, right? It's just like the online marketing landscape. It's a constant assault of bright, shiny objects demanding your attention, not just showing it to you, demanding that you pay attention. And understandably, it's very difficult to focus your mind on one thing at a time. So, I want to move forward rather than live in a state of overwhelm, right? And and confusion. We're going to take a look at a simple process anyone can use to get started. Tackle one piece of the puzzle, the starting piece at the time in, in realistic increments that are achievable for you. So I recommend this easy to follow process that I've used to make progress myself.
before we get into more detail of the process, I want to stop for just a second and share some truth with you. This is your timeline and no one else's. As you're working on your, ende on your endeavors and your work and, and your business, don't compare your chapter one to anyone else's chapter 10. Um, it's unfair to you. We all begin without a single thing done. It's all created from scratch. Only you know where you are at any given time and how much time and energy you can put towards marketing. So give yourself the grace to take on what you can. And remember that small wins are wins just the same. So let's look at this easy to follow process. If you follow these steps, you can really get the ball rolling and build, build something that you can you know, keep expanding as time goes forward. So the four basic steps to start building relationships today are, one, understand what you can do now. So as I referenced before, you know, this is your timeline. Only you know what you can and can't do and how much time you have to allocate to marketing. Um, it could be a full-time job in and of itself. It's a rabbit hole that if you go down too much, you get overwhelmed so easily, but it also just saps all the time out of you such that you don't want to do it anymore because you have to sacrifice, you have to trade out. So what I'm suggesting is that you under, you identify how much time you have that you can give right now. Do this process with that time. And then you can start another process and reassess whether you have more time or less time and you can go and adjust as things go forward. Um, the second step is you have to understand who you're talking to. So many people uh, try marketing and they just talk at their prospect or at their potential customers or they just throw things out there thinking they understand what, what they want. But if you don't really sit yourself down and, and make, make time to understand who they are and define them so that you understand them and go looking for them online to see if you if what your understanding is matches their what they're actually talking about, then then you waste more time than it's worth. So you don't want to waste your time. You want to make sure you you hit your right target and there is some trial and error involved, but you know you really want to set yourself up on good footing to begin with. Then the third step is really determine their problem, their need, or their gap in knowledge or information um, that you're going to be able to help them with. So we all have super skills, right? We're all very, very smart people. We know what we know the best, but is that really what a potential customer needs? And the only way you know that is if you go into the space that they're in and you inhabit that space, whether it's on LinkedIn or articles or medium, or you know, whether you attend events and you're a fly on the wall or, or you read books, however it is, magazines, journals, whatever piece of information gets you closer to them or a place where they hang out, then you can really listen to the conversation that's going on. And you need to give yourself time to do that before you craft anything or, you know, it's, it's again, time lost. And then the fourth step is once you do one, two, and three, then you can go out and let them know how you can help them and actually deliver your message to them and start to build the bridge. So step one, it, you know, let's go back in, in each of these in a little bit more detail. So step one is you'll want to understand what you can do now, what you're ready to do. So for example, are your social media accounts ready? Is your Facebook page set up? Do you have a LinkedIn profile out there with your picture and your contact information and some information describing what you do and what your business is? If you do, then you're ready to start posting in social media and joining groups and start engaging with potential con uh, potential clients and customers. If you're not there yet, it doesn't make sense to go out and post and engage because anybody that you might reach out to that's interested in you 
and say they go and click on your profile and they're not going to see anything about your business or you. And that's, that's an opportunity lost and they'll never come back again. It's kind of like the first impression is the impression that you always carry, right? So you want to make sure that you're set up for people to come and find you first. Then there's another thing. If you have a product to sell, could you create a sample of it, a sample or a preview, and then you'll create a document, a PDF document and or a video um, and offer it as a free sample via email or via social media or on your website, right? If you're a service-based business, um, do you want to offer a 15-minute consultation call that's helping with a small task? Um, do you like to do interviews? You could volunteer to be a podcast guest or online event panelist to share your expertise. Um, for that, you create a presentation of what you want people to know about you most and what your, what your skills are that you, that you want to share with your potential customers. And you find an expert in the field that's doing events or speaking to that audience and see if you can connect and and join them on stage or at a virtual event, and then you can get exposure to your client base. So for all of these things, you, sh you share a way for potential customers or clients to contact you for info, right? So you just have to have contact information, a place for them to land to find out more about you, and uh, a way to deliver your, your free gift. Um, these are just a few things that you could do. There are so many more, but assess what you really have time to do, what interests you, what you think will work for your industry and your line of work. Um, now you want to talk about, now we know what you're, where you are in your timeline and what you have time to do. We want to talk about who you're building a relationship with. Okay, and we do this in three ways. The first way is we create a mental image of them in our mind. The second is that we um, research a bit about their world and their universe, and then we take a walk in their shoes. So the first one, creating a mental image in your mind is, is really creating a clear picture in your head of what they look like where they live, like this is an instance of your perfect client, okay? So where they live, what they do, what's their profession, what defines them? Um, and you might be saying, why do we do this? I know who I target, you know, like this is, this is silly. Well, if you don't have a clear picture in your head that you can call to mind when you think of them, it's like speaking to somebody in the dark. It's like you walk down the hallway, you open up the bedroom door, you poke your head in, it's pitch black. You know somebody's in there, right? But you can't see a thing. You have no idea what words are appropriate to speak to them. You don't know if they're sleeping. You don't know if they're, they're awake and their facial expression is like, don't come near me, I'm going to shoot you. Or if it's just, you know, open and happy or waiting, anticipatory, you have no idea. You don't have facial, a facial expression, no body language. You don't know how they're dressed. You have no cues whatsoever to help you engage in conversation. Um, you're essentially talking at them. And, you know, you don't really, that is not effective. You know yourself, when someone's talking at you, you tune them out. You, you don't want to hear what they have to say. It's not engaging, right? So by taking the time to bring an instance of your potential customer or client in your mind, you get rid of the generic talk and you get rid of placing your assumptions on them. If you bring them alive, how they look, dress, sound, gender, age, height, weight, build, are they married? Do they have kids? Do they have pets? You know, if you're married, it's different than being single. If you have kids, it's a different way of life and a different way of thinking. So the mental image gets you ready to relate to them. Like seeing somebody in daylight, right? You can see so much about them and that mental image informs everything you do in regards to them. So just by looking at an image, you narrow your vocabulary down. Just by seeing a person as say, you see a guy running down the street, um, he's a man, 
So you eliminate half of your gender vocabulary just, just by realizing that it's a guy running down the street. And then because he's running, he's fit. So you're going to take a whole host of other vocabulary out of, out of your mind, right? So your brain processes that so quickly and cleaves your vocabulary down to make it more appropriate. If you don't do this exercise, then you're forcing yourself to manually do all that stuff yourself when you go to sit down to write. And I believe that's why some people have such writer's block and creative block because they don't go through the steps to prepare their brains and their minds for what they need to do. So um, you wanna describe an instance of a person you wanna work with. And you wanna, describe, then you want to describe what the world is like, okay, or what their everyday is like. So do they exercise? Do they ride a bike? Do they run? Do they do yoga? Are they couch potatoes? Do they like the outdoors? They like to go camping or fishing. Um, do they work in an office or at home? Well, obviously, you know, in the last few years, that's not as relevant because everything's changed. But you know, do they have hobbies like photography or knitting or do they write? Are they painters? Um, are they comfortable with technology? That's a big one. Do they use a smartphone or a flip phone? Um, they're going to help you. These things are going to help you speak to them in context with what they understand. So like if someone has a flip phone and you start talking about apps on your phone, or completing transactions on your phone or capturing leads or viewing a video, you're gonna lose that person completely because they're like, I don't do that. And, and so there's your, your opportunity is gone. Everything is relevant when you see them in your mind and you can get that context. So after that, then we're gonna take a walk in their shoes and this is kind of, some people call this psychographics. I like to just call it walking in their shoes because I think that's nicer. Are they frustrated at work? Okay. Do they, uh, are they traveling? They're running the rat race. They're on that rat race treadmill. They have no time to live. They're out on the road working and they're exhausted. Do they have children to pay tuition for? Um, are they trying to buy a new home and start a family? Um, do money worries about their business haunt them or, you know, do they have a big mortgage that they shouldn't have taken and they're getting older and they're worried about it? Um, do they just need a break? They haven't had a vacation in two years. They're super stressed out. These are motivate motivations for what they do in life. Right. But also in business. So we, they may not directly come into the office and say, oh God, I'm so worried. I have to pay tuition for two teenagers and they're getting closer and I don't have enough saved. No, of course not. But if that's a business owner or a manager, you, you have to be counting on the fact that that's part of his mindset every single day in everything that they do, because it weighs heavily on them. So it, everything they do is going to be influenced by it. So if you were to speak to that emotional trigger for the trigger is not a good word, but that emotional feeling that they're having and connect with that somehow, that you're a solution, your outcome that you'll give them in relation to this emotional trigger is a solution, then it could ease their worries. It can make their life better and you give them relief, right? Um, it's kind of some people say what keeps them up at night or what conversation are they having at the dining room table at the dinner table at night. Um, these are really important things to consider and try to relate to when you're choosing your words and how you speak to them and you're choosing your themes and your messages. So, so let's get a little bit more specific about this. If your client was worried about money, as we just talked about, um, what would ease that worry? More business, more sales, more clients, potential clients for them to grow their income, right? If they're exhausted from overwork, traveling or whatever, 
what outcome can we provide to ease that? Well, maybe more free time by providing a service or taking something off their shoulders. They have to do a routine task or a routine uh, annual thing, right? Or um, you can coach them on how to be organized better, more efficient, how to delegate better, whatever management style things there might be or organizational things there may be to help them, right? If they're stressed out about, again, what can we give them? We can give them coaching on meditation or yoga or mindset or relieve some of the stress, uh, provide services and healing and health, um, a retreat maybe, or help them you know, realign their priorities through a trustworthy source. So in the end, we connect their problem, need, worry, or information gap to an emotional ideal they're experiencing. And then we craft our offering ideas, products, services to help them. So now we're, we're, we're at the last step, which is let them know you can help. So this is the last step, the actual building of the bridge. And here's where you take what you're ready to do from step one and implement it. Write it as if you're speaking to the potential client you visualized in step two. Craft it as relevant to their problem, issue, need, or information gap you identified in step three. The one that emotionally charged topic for them, the one that keeps them up at night. And then you go out and begin connecting to the platform you chose in step one or others website posts, email articles, right? Um, it sounds simplistic, but it really is that easy. And if you do it in bite-sized pieces, you are going to find that you can accomplish and achieve this cycle without the heavy weight of the task being so large. So, and I think that that's what hurts so many people when they do marketing is they bite off more than they can really handle at a time and it becomes consuming and they avoid it and try to find solutions in a short way. When it really, if you just plan it out and do a little at a time, you can get there. So um, before I move on to my tools and tips portion of the show, um, I want to tell you about a free gift I have for you. I expect it to be doing. Okay, so, um, wow, my free gift. This is my current free gift I'm offering on my website, on my Facebook page, and my posts, and my emails. You can see how I set up the pipeline to gather this information. It's a sample of the whole cycle that we just went through. And I help people set up their technology. Um, and here's the free gift. It's called the Building Influence Guide. It is available at mmediagroupllc.com slash free dash gift. I'll give you a minute to make note of the address and take a screenshot for later. I work with folks to set up their technology and help them automate their marketing. If you'd like any information, please visit my website mmediagroupllc.com. Reach out through the contact page or via email, and uh, I'll make sure I get back to you as soon as possible. So now I'm going to give you um, talk about my free gift of the week. And this week it's canva.com. It's a free graphics creation platform that makes the task of creating images for posts, emails, and websites so easy to do. I, I used it to create this post with the, with the animation for an ad campaign. I used it to create the free giveaway I just mentioned before. Here's another animated post I created. Here's the banner image for the show. Um, so let's take a look at the platform so I can give you an idea of how to use it. Um,
here we go. So I've opened up Canva. It's a free service, as I said, and they don't nag you to sign up for a, a subscription. It truly is free. And the amount of functionality that is free is, is substantial. I worked with it for two years almost before I signed up for the professional version, which is $40 a month. So first thing you want to do after you create your free account is there are templates here, which is fantastic. So I went for Facebook posts up here and Valentine's Day, because that's the next holiday that's coming up, right? So I'm going to have a, a Valentine's Day sale and I am going to pick Valentine's Day sale. Where are you? You were right here. Oh, here. So you choose the template you want. You customize this template. And then it comes to, um, it brings it up and everything that you can click on, you can change. So th in this case, the background is, is one solid image. So you really can't change the background, but you can change all of these pieces here, okay? So you can put your name of your business, happy Valentine's Day sale. You can add in text up here. You can animate the pieces that are already there by clicking on this animation. And let's say we wanna just do typewriter, for example and we, we run it and see what it, what it looks like. So you see how shop now was like a typewriter? Well, you could do that for different pieces and it'll become, you can save it as a video if you'd rather have a video for, for your post as opposed to just an image. This is really fantastic because you can save it and so you can say file save here and set up a folder. And then once you save the file, you say download and you choose what format you want it in. So for a flat image, you choose PNG and look, here's the size for an Instagram post or a Facebook post that is acceptable. You don't have to do anything else, but just say download. And when you download it, it shows up in your downloads folder on your computer. And then you can do what you need to do with it. So Canva, um, I can't say enough about how wonderful Canva really is because I've done videos with it. Here's a create a plank video. So let's say you need to do an introduction for, for a YouTube video you're gonna do, right? You can choose one of these that's already set up and if you were to play it, here's what the, the playing is. Well, let's say you wanted to just have a neat, neat ad or an intro for a YouTube video. You could just change this text here and here. And if you had to, you could put another video clip in there, but you could just change these two things and it's done. So before where you used to use um, different tools to create all these different pieces and then pull them together yourself. It's just so much quicker and shorter to do it in Canva. Um, I can't say enough about how wonderful it is. So that's my free tool for the week. And um, I want you to play with it as much as possible because there are advanced things you can do. So if you get accustomed to the basics and you start to really manipulate it, you can help level yourself up more and more and it'll really save you some time. So I am so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is and my hope is you came away with a few nuggets uh, you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful info for you so you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships, amazing customers and clients. As always, if you have any questions, drop a post on my show Facebook page, go to my website, send a contact or an email, and join me here next week for my next episode. Thank you so much for your time. Bye.